Hello oh. and welcome back for round three. I beat you to it. You did beat me to it. I beat you to it. I've been beaten. Uh, welcome back for round three of our Wednesday night standard here at Game Swap Mason in lovely Mason, Ohio. So I'm Keely, joined tonight by I am Patrick Nar Savage, and also we are joined by cats. Yeah. And some robots. And by robots, I mean servo tokens. Yeah. So I was incorrect. So Mike is on cats. I thought he. I don't know who anybody is. I'm pretty sure Mike is just borrowing uh, Tony's cats deck. I think so. We have a pride mate. Let's see if we got some life gain going on. Make this a big. This a swole cat. Oh, Mike. Uh, it, it's a dead we are cat. being informed that this is in fact Mike's cat deck. Oh, okay. And here is the marquee card of the Absent Tokens deck in Hidden Stockpile. Such a good card. It's a very Such powerful a Magic card. the Gathering card. I actually tried to play it in Aether Revolt Standard, you know, before all the good token support was Yeah, printed. well, the big problem with playing it in Aether Revolt Standard is that you were getting Ulamog. It died to everything. And on Emerald Cooled on turn two. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, no, no. That wasn't Marvel. That was Cat Combo. You were getting Cat Comboed. I didn't even play that long. And now we my, my foray in into Aether Revolt Standard was very short. Yeah, it wasn't that great. You basically had to either play Mardu or Cat or Four Color Sahili. And I don't play things that are actual decks out of spite. I know people who do that. It's fine. I mean, that's why I play Commander, because I don't care about them. I, I don't care about metas. Yeah. So it looks like we have a an, the other Hallmark Enchantment of the Absent Token deck in Anointed Procession. One of the cards that was not printed in Aether Revolt Standard that really yeah. could have been used. We'll see if uh, Mike has a way to get rid of it, like another cast out in Ixalan's Binding. Looks like he had as a Cat of Bladehold. Good cat. I don't remember the exact name of the card. It's 4 mana 4-4 four, four that uh, when it attacks, you make two 1-1s one, with lifelink. Type of cats. I just call it Cat of Bladehold. Like, and now it is hold. exiled. Yes. And if Bryce draws, uh, I believe, a forest... Uh, yeah, Kaladesh was a great yeah. standard if you were playing no. a deck that was in the meta. That Well, that's true. So... You're getting your metas a little combined there. At the end of Kaladesh, there were, like, three real decks. Blue-White Flash, which was on its way out near the end yep. of Kaladesh. Green-Black Delirium, which still wasn't great. And, the very, like, near the end of Kaladesh, that's when the really big Marvel decks that played no Ulamogs, they just played Emrakul, mm -hmm. came out. I actually took, uh, with my... Horrible, horrible white black token deck. I actually took a uh, delirium deck to time. I mean, yeah, it can happen. Great. Um, so I, or it wasn't. I took him to time. I took him to time and milled him out. Yeah, that's he true. He milled himself out. It was great. There, so there were a few decks, but Mardu vehicles at that point wasn't a rever like a great deck. Blue white fa flash. You had to make like a really weird uh, argument to like justify playing, and control wasn't really control that really big. Exist. Control won the pro tour. But after the metagame, that was when the, uh... Yeah, so if you're looking at PT Kaladesh, like, that top eight, I agree. The... Around then, it was pretty good, but that's when Marvel was an all-in combo deck. Mm -hmm. As that format progressed, and as that format, um... Uh, continued to, like, see... Like, like you could see what happened in that format, it devolved pretty quickly as you can tell by the fact that three cards got banned from standard f after that format right that format emrakul got banned smuggler's copter got banned reflector mage got banned yeah that and that didn't it just didn't mm -hmm. work out and then they printed cat combo which reduced everything to cat combo and mardu uh now i remember tokens, i just remembered vehicles. why i remember very little about kaladesh standard why it wasn't until after the revolt, obviously, that I tried to play tokens. Mm -hmm. I tried to make the modules combo work in. Kind of oh yeah, no, God no. I it it was a plan. It was just like a six card combo. 
Yeah. Which went about as well as the word six card combo would make you think it would go. Yeah. It didn't. So I like what Bryce is doing here. He is pushing his own anointer priest. And then he's going to uh, eternalize it. Or no, that one has embalm. Mm -hmm. He's going to embalm it and gain four life because he gets two tokens thanks to anointed procession. Yay. I'm going to go get two basics for his troubles. Yes, and he gets the forest, so that unlocks the... Uh, whatchamacallit? The Vraska in his hand. So yeah, I expect to see an anointed priest here. Uh, they both are tokens, so they'll both see each other. So yep. each of them will gain two life. Yep, so we'll, he'll gain four. And then... Uh, so then we have... They match up pretty well against... Uh, oh, wait, what? We're not doing anything? Interesting. You can't do that in... So we're, oh, so he just wants to make two one ones. That's what he wants to do here. Which is also fine. Yeah. I think... So he's gonna make two vampires. He's probably just gonna jump block. Gain two. Gain two... No, he actually only gains one life because the anointed pounce is double oh, strike. Oh, does have double strike. You're correct. I think maybe what Bryce is going to do is he's going to embalm the Anointed Priest so then with uh, Adanto, the first fort mana up. Or he could embalm and then also play Veraska, mm -hmm. which I like. Would also be very good here. Because then he's still gaining a lot of tokens. So what you can do here if you're Bryce is we can play Veraska, we can... Uh, destroy the cast out mm -hmm. get two treasure tokens and then we can use our treasure tokens and two do. lands to destroy to embalm the anointed priest mm -hmm. we get two anointed priests and four life or we're just gonna pass it up <sighs> okay this is fine too i guess he should at least get his treasures he can't forget to get the treasures. It's part of the ability resolving. Yeah, it is a part of the resolution. Um, so yeah, I, I want to get these Anointed Priests in play. I think the added value you get. I think he at least should have sacrificed one of these treasures to trigger a vault and get two servos out of the hidden stockpile. Mm -hmm. So we're getting... And it looks like now his Verask is going to die because of Ronus. Yeah. Which, I'm not sure having more tokens would have stopped that, but... Let's see, drawing... Another Legion's Landing isn't exactly where you want it to be. No, he should have embalmed the Anointed Priest first. He would have gained four more life. Sequencing, Bryce. Sequencing. So, sack of treasure. And... Okay, so he just sacked it to get revolt. Okay, so... Varentine, are you talking about everything from, like when Kaladesh came out was to when Aetherworks Marvel was banned? Because that spanned almost three sets coming out and were three entirely different formats. Mm -hmm. And I played a tier deck in every single one of those formats. So... I also just found that personally, and granted I wasn't... I tried to play Standard at the time, but once Aetherworks came out and we had like the Sahili, the Sahili cat, cat combo mm -hmm. and the Marvel decks, I just wasn't it. It just got boring for me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I played a lot of different decks during that. When Kaladesh first came out, I played uh, I played a decent amount of Jeskai Control. I played, like, did one event with Marty Vehicles and then I settled on Green Black Delirium for a long time. And then Seth top aided a GP with, Par uh, with uh, Panharmonicon and I had to play that because that was so much fun. But that's a little besides the point. Card. Besides the point. When Aethervolt came out, um, I played 
a decent amount of four color Sahili, and then I played a little bit of like that team or Dynavolt Tower deck when it came out, when it like they started gaining popularity. And then when Amit Kent came out and it was all like Jund vehicles and Marvel, I played Blue Red Control. Mm-hmm. Which and had a lot of success with that. But like those three formats were all very different. Mm-hmm. They had decks that like l- maybe looked similar, but what they what like the, the ultimate decks were were pretty and you can't just look at pro tour results when you're trying to decide if a format's healthy because the format adapts beyond that. Mm-hmm. Really, for me to determine when you're looking back at a format, if you want to look at the format's healthy, look at the entirety of the format, especially near the end. Where did people settle up on the format once a lot of work had been put and time had been put into honestly trying to break it? Mm-hmm. And at the end of Kaladesh Standard, uh, recent GPLA champion Logan Nettles, aka Jabberwocky, he broke it. That green red marble deck that he did played was huge. Varentine, that's not true. Uh, Marvel top aided the Pro Tour in the hands of Matt Nass. Uh, that was so it the. So looks like we finally embalmed the uh, Noida Priest. Oh, thank God. Um, yeah, Mar- he top aided the Pro Tour with it with an all in combo version. And then if you look at the Star City Games Invitational at the end of that season, uh, it was won Pro Tour Kaladesh. But the Star City Games Invitational that Jacob Baugh won, he won with Naya Marvel. And then the following Players' Championship was most of the players brought either Teamer, Naya, or just straight Green Red Marvel. It was the most played deck of Standard by far. So now I think this is where Bryce wants to be. He's put a lot, putting a lot of tokens into play. Mm-hmm. Uh, he really does need to deal with this. Find a way to deal with this Ronus though, because Trample does not care about tokens. Yeah, Ronus is putting in a lot of work here already. Although honestly, the tokens that uh, and the life that he's gaining from Anointed Priest might offset it. I'm not sure. But we need to sit down here and. Pr- pr- Prepare for a grind. Because when this token deck wins, it does not win quickly. We might be able to build up an army with, uh... And then win with... Lay down some kitty cats. Whatever. Oh, what is that land called? The white one. I can't remember the name that pumps your team. Chef at Dunes. Yeah. Uh, Chef at Dunes is a, uh... Sorcery speed, correct? Yes. All the ones from that cycle that affect They're combat are a sorcery speed. That doesn't really matter anymore. They're about to rotate out, but um, um, so it looks like we're throwing down a couple more vampires. Yeah, which I I, mean, I expect to see. Gain some more life. Um, bye. You have a good night, man. So, trying to figure out where Mike's going to put his Ronus and I think activation. A, I think a lot of the debate on the, uh, especially on Kaladesh and Revolt, was also the format of where you were playing. Because around here, it was solidly 50 plus percent Saheli Cat combo. Yeah. From what I saw a lot of. Uh, a I, lot I don't know. Cat. So we're going to... Plus, or in, or in a plus plump pump on the adorned pouncer. And Bryce is going to lose a decent amount of his tokens here. We're going to trade with he- trade with Hero of Blade Cat. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cat of Blade Hold. Kitty and Golda. Yeah, Bryce needs to find a way to deal with this Ronus. Because. I mean, like I said, Trample's huge, and he's losing most of his tokens here. Mm-hmm. And also just being able to pump up a double striker is pretty really good. But if he just finds Ixalan's Binding, or if he finds Cast Out, I don't know exactly what enchantment removal he's playing in his main deck. This will probably turn around for him. And what we should see here is a Scry from Treasure Map in the upkeep from Bryce. Mm-hmm. 
Nope. Oh. Oh, he found it. He found the line. And he wants it. What does he what does he draw? What did he want? Let's see. It's a Vrass's Contempt. So we found the answer to Ronus. Yep, so that's very, very important. Yes, now one. we can... What do we want to do? So I think what he should do here is he should activate his Adanto on his main phase, and then he should sacrifice one of the tokens mm -hmm. so that he gets the two more tokens from Hidden Stockpile, and it looks like yep. that's what he's going to do. Gonna activate, get a couple of vampires, gain some life, sack one. Yep, and then he's gonna get some servos. Sack one, scry one, gain some more life at the end of turn. Yeah, and I think now that if Mike does not have another Ronus in his hand or another way to get his creatures over these tokens, so I think this like is where we're, we're gonna pop. start putting away. And if that's another anointed procession, we're done here. Yeah. That'll just get it exponential growth really, really quick. Four, four servos. Why are we getting four servos? That should only be two. Maybe he's meaning four triggers? Yeah. Sorry, again, we can hear what he's saying. You guys can't, so... Why does he gain eight? I mean, oh, he gets eight over the course of the turn from the yeah. vampires. Uh, okay, he meant four tokens. Yeah. Okay, so... And, like, this deck is a little confusing. Um, mm -hmm. It's been around for a little bit now. Uh, it's about to rotate out, obviously. Like, the entirety of the deck's about to rotate out. Which is sad. It's fine. It makes me sad. Yeah. I thought... That it was really going to become a good deck when they printed uh, a Lend of the Dusk Rose. Yeah. I played it with this deck, and you could do some dumb things with the Lend of the Dusk Rose. <laughs> well, I'm certainly hoping to do some dumb things with her in Modern. Yeah. I'm actually playing her as a one of in my White Black Soul Sisters Aristocrats deck. Um, I'm actually considering playing her over one of um, Archangel Athun. I think Archangel's just better. I kind of want to try it out because they're both really good in their own right. And they're both going to be Yeah, worse. it depends if you're more on the Soul Scissors side or more on the Aristocrat side. I'm trying to divide it, like, straight down the line. Interesting. So. I think you probably just want to, like, focus up. Yeah, well, the... Yeah, it's you can make an something... absurd amount of tokens. Yeah. I think the highest I made was 42. And excuse Might me, Justin, 32. I have 17 lands. That's a very low amount of lands. It is a very low amount of lands. But it's also a super low to the ground deck, and mm -hmm. I've at least goldfishing it I haven't had a problem, but at the same time I still haven't actually gotten to play it against anything yet. Yeah. So I think Mike needs something to affect combat this turn, and at the very latest next turn, whether it's another Ronus or Well, the fact that he's about to embalm this or eternalize this Dorn Pouncer really does help. So, here's the 4-4 uh, four, four double striker. Now we have a big cat. And a very large cat. Yeah, so we're going to be able to chump lock that for a while. But I think I think we can just kill the Serpapar next turn. Looks like he kept a Fatal Push on top. Okay. That's fair. That's a decent card to keep on top. Yeah. Mike's complaining about a top deck, but no, it, it was scried there, and then they figured it out. So, yeah, and now I expect we're going to see some more scries, some more sacrificing of tokens. And I, if I was Bryce, I think I would have made some tokens first, because we definitely want to sacrifice one of our tokens to hit in stockpile mm -hmm. to scry. So now that one scry that we have doesn't do a ton. Right. Because if you sacrifice one of the tokens, you like essentially net up one token. Right. You go to three instead of two. So 
still gonna go ahead and sacrifice. Okay, he's gonna sacrifice it. So you're still getting a lot of advantage here. Yeah. The big thing is the problem is for Bryce is he doesn't have any way to like really get ahead on creatures. Um, he's mm -hmm. using all of his tokens every turn, so he's not netting tokens right. on turn. What he really needs to find is a second copy of Anointed Procession, mm -hmm. or just for to get through a combat without using all his tokens. Right. I mean, he is at least still getting a lot of life by utilizing all of his tokens. That's true. But uh, it, it is at least drawing the game out, and he is waiting to set up to get himself into a, a position in which he can just flood the board with tokens. Correct. Do we have an accurate life total on Bryce? I'm just curious. It's changed a lot. Yay, life gain. So this is the card that he left on top. I'm interested to see what it is. Another copy of Fatal Push? Nope, we're gonna No, scry. we're scrying and we're getting some treasures. So now the big thing is we can use these treasures to trigger Revolt. We don't need to sacrifice our tokens to do that. We also get six treasures because of Anointed Procession, which is really sweet. Seems pretty great. Yep, so now... Was that a cast out? That may have been a cast I think that was a cast out. That's a decent one. That gets rid of the Serpa part. And now it's just a bunch of his 1-1s one against our 1-1s, one and we'll have a lot more 1-1s one if mm -hmm. we're Bryce. The thing is, though, why are we attacking before casting cast out, if that's what that is? There's a very real chance I'm just wrong about what card he has in hand. It definitely was white. Yes. I can at least agree on that count. It yeah. was definitely a white card. We are not the Pro Tour. We do not have hand spotters, unfortunately. Yet. Someday. I don't think we have really a big plan. I think that's pretty low on our list of priorities. It is a someday. It's just not a someday soon. True. I don't really think there's really a good way we can do that. Yeah. No, that looks so, yeah. like a fatal push, actually. Maybe it's a fatal push. So that makes more sense. Now we have revolts and can just push the Serp apart. So... Th this game's gonna take a little bit more time. I think Bryce has it at this point. I'm not sure there's a bunch Mike can do to really keep going from here. I do like that Wizards printed this uh, Cat of Blade Hold, whatever its name is, the uh, four mana four four, to give uh, cats like this one last chance uh, before Omnicat rotates. Right. Leonin War Leader, I'm being told, is the name. Which we were actually informed of that earlier. You just didn't notice. Oh, were we? I apologize. Ooh, we have. I like your name for it anyway. Cat of Blade Hold. Yeah. So. Just because he acknowledged have... that he saw it doesn't mean he actually saw it. It's true. I was in a little bit of a... You were in rant mode. I would call it more argument mode, which I apologize for. I guess I really didn't need to do that. But, I don't know. I don't like incorrect facts. That's fair. I mean, so... granted, that entire time I was sitting back like, so, Commander, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Like I do. Yep. So now I think we have a couple choices if we're Bryce. We can take the opportunity to make a bunch of vampires with a Danto and throw a bunch of stuff in front of the Serpa part. We can Why is he blocking with one of the anointed? Because it's a 1-1 one -one and might as well just eat it. Okay. I guess he doesn't really need the life gain at this point. I'm just kind of confused. He doesn't. I don't think I'd block with I think I'd just block with a 1-1. Yeah. Because green-white has a few combat tricks. Uh, one of the most notable ones is appeal to authority. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to lose any of my... Uh, so he's just going to throw the priests. army in front of the Serpa part. That's fine. I have no problem with that. Um. So we've made our blocks... 
Oh, is the Anoir so Priest still a 1 3 once it's embalmed? Yeah, it's still 1 3. Okay, so yeah, that yep. makes sense. So it's yeah, embalm a... completely just copies the card. That's right. And actually, the uh, cat is a 2 2 because of Regal Caracal. And the Serpent Part's a 5 4. So the Serpent Part should still die. So we're going to embalm our sacred cat. Apparently Bryce is at 45. Yeah, and... Bryce is at plenty. Yeah, he's at a lot. But so it does matter. So that is a fatal push in hand. So yeah, I don't actually like how we blocked on the Serpent part, because we have a fatal push that, that can only kill tokens on this board. So mm -hmm. why didn't we just trade with one of the cat tokens... And then... Got a Terrarian. That's a Terrarian. Uh, that's a tr uh, Renegade map. Renegade map. Yeah. Well, why don't we just trade with one of the cat tokens and then push the Serpent Bard? The, the blue threw me off. Yeah, that's fine. So I do expect Bryce to draw a card here with the Treasure Cove. Which it looks like he is fixing to do. Yep. And there, there I was about to is. say it. There's another Anointed Procession. Now... We're making a lot of tokens every single turn, and this yeah. is where Bryce is going to start to really pull away with this game. Yeah. Mike's and he's already got Revolt, so he doesn't mm -hmm. even need to sack token again. Mike has been kind of keeping up on creatures. Uh, it's been slow, but we've kind of got there. He's at a few token makers of his own. But now, end step, we're getting four servo tokens, gaining eight life. Eight life. Going to um, 53. Bryce is going to be able to activate that Adanto get four more vampires, gain eight more life. Yeah. This is where we're really going to run away with this game. Yeah. Be great at this point to see him play something like Aetherflux Reservoir. Or, you know, he specifically he Aetherflux Reservoir. That. Like, yeah, that'd be kind of cool to just, like, it would, end the game. I think it would be great, but I also really like that card. Yeah. But, like, there's also just some games with this deck where you don't have the, uh... The life gain. You don't have the Anointed Priest, and yeah. so... And you don't play that many spells a turn. You frequently get into this situation when you're only playing the top card of your deck. Right. No, I'm not. I, like, I'm not saying you're not wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, just I know. really like that card. Yeah. It's about to leave standard, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. Because uh, then people stop trying to brew around it and lose matches of magic because of it. Yeah. It's like okay in the mono blue storm deck, but even then, some people are cutting it because your Karn's just a better win condition. Mm hmm. So, what do we got here, Bryce? Land. Somewhere we want to be. Play land, play land. Probably draw some more cards here. Yep. Go ahead, car draw another card. And a third Anointed Procession! Okay, yeah, we it's, are done. We're done. This is very over. If I was Mike, I, I probably would have scooped to the second one. But the third one, I would definitely mm -hmm. be out of this game because there's no way you're getting through. Even if he has, like, a Ronis. Mm -hmm. But even as we're watching this game, I don't think Mike really understands uh, Bryce's deck. Didn't Mike play against Abzan Tokens last week? I'm... I'm pretty sure he did because I remember talking certain. about Ronis being up by uh, against Cats. So... Yeah, like, look at how many servos we have here. Yeah, he's, and just, the, uh, he's just spitting robots on the board. And for those of you who spitting don't... Spitting hot metal. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Anointed Priest is stacks. So your first one, the first, so you make one token. The first Anointed Priest says, okay, now we're going to make two. The second one sees that you're going to make two tokens, so it says, okay, we're going to make four. Yep. The third one sees, okay, you're going to make four tokens, so we're, we're going to make eight. eight. It's dumb. Uh, Bryce just gained 16 life. He's about to gain 16 more. Um, so I expect this game is going to be over next turn because of that Chef at Dunes that is in play. Yeah. And Bryce can take just anything straight to the face yeah. and not care. The only thing he wouldn't survive right now is, I think, an Infinity Elemental. Yep. And that's not standard legal. <laughs> it's not legal at period. 
It's not legal. It's unformat in- legal. No one plays that. It's still legal in A format. So, yeah, here's where I expect to see. So, Mike has eight. Actually, I'm not sure if we uh, block, if we chef at dunes everything and block, it's going to be lethal. Because Mike has two 4-4 four, four caracals that both have lifelink. And on top. six 3-3 three, three cats that all have lifelink. There's a memorial to unity that's... That's fine. Make some tokens. Sex cry. I think Bryce is probably just, just gonna sit here and make like two more tokens. Sex or like cry. two more turns of tokens. Leave that. Draw hard. Let's see what we're drawing here. It's a oh, hidden stockpile! A second hidden stockpile. So let's make 16 tokens at the end of our turn. For no reason. What do you mean no reason? We got revolt. That's a reason. Yeah. I think he's just uh, trying to go ahead and get himself to a point where he can just turn all of his creatures sideways and just make sure that oh, he's yeah. lethal. Which is pretty close at this point already. Yeah. The problem is that there are, like I said earlier, there is 20, 18, 26 points of life gain on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And we have 12, 24, 29, there would be two twos, he blocks eight of them, so that's 21 two twos, so 42 points gets in, that's not quite lethal. Or maybe I was wrong about the creatures, it looks like there's some confusion about what's going on. What? Why are we only gaining 8 life this turn? I think he's correcting a mistake that was made. Okay. I we should be gaining 32 life this turn. I don't know. All I know is during the end step, he should be gaining 32 life. 2 in Winter Priest, 16 servos entering the battlefield at the end of turn. Yep. I don't know. At this Mike, point, can you scoot, his... please? <laughs> I don't like saying that, but like, I... it, it, this is over. Yeah, this this is over. Yeah, that's that's an accurate life total for Bryce at this point. Mm-hmm. Because We're gonna at gain... this point, his life total does not matter. We're gonna gain, I believe, thirty-two more life at the when he activates a Danto. Mm-hmm. Like Mike can never attack at this point, and eventually Bryce will just have lethal on the crackback. Yeah. Probably next turn. So unless Mike is playing something like... I mean, if Mike has settled the wreckage... I'm sorry? If Mike has settled the wreckage... That's true. It could be a big, huge blowout. Yeah, you're correct. And uh, we did... Yeah, I'm sorry. We yeah. did see Mike cast Ace Out of the Wreckage earlier this game as well. And that's what happened. Cause yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. The one Adanto activation game who gains him only 16, not 32. That's my bad. Yeah, 8 um, tokens, 30, uh, yeah. 16 life. I was in the mindset of his end step where he gets 2 tokens, which is 16 tokens. There's 2 in the priest, so 32. Math camp. Welcome to Top Deck Productions, the... Helpful math stream with commenta- a commentator who is the son of a math teacher and still doesn't know basic math. And another commentator that took business calculus for fun. Yep. That's where we are. While play- I got to be in the class and I played Pokemon on an emulator in the front row of the class. My I did teacher that a lot. also really liked me. I did that a lot in high school. Oh, and I refused to use my math lab because that... Oh, math lab sucks. Yeah. But my teacher also knew me and I could get away with that mm-hmm. pretty easily. So we lethal yet? <laughs> I mean, Mike's had one card this hand for probably most of the game, and Bryce hasn't been attacking. And we have no idea what it is, because he's definitely not showing the camera. So the fact that it, if it's Settle the Wreckage, we're told it's planes. 
But Bryce doesn't but know that. And Mike's still going to hold it up like it's a set of the record. Yeah, honestly, like, if Bryce just attacks with everything here, he still gets 30, 48 token. No. Yeah. 24 tokens. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so. And now we are forming the pyramid of dice. So yeah, even if he swings in and gets, so, yeah. gets settled, he'd still get yeah. eight or sixteen tokens back at end of turn. And then it activates a Danto for another eight, so it's twenty-four. Yeah. Oh, and then Mike just just settled the wreckage. Oh <laughs> no. And Mike's not facing the clock. He doesn't know he only has fifteen minutes left in the round. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, apparently they just checked how much time's left in the round. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, my God! And the funny thing is that it doesn't even matter. Like, like again, if Bryce it just... It does, but it doesn't. Like, if Bryce just shoves, he gets settled, and then... It's not the end of the world. ...makes 24 more tokens. Let's figure out how to untap. Oh, my God. Can you attack now, Bryce? Please? Put us out of our misery. Can you, can you take those tokens and turn them sideways, please? Get, like, almost all the lands out of your deck. We're scrying in our upkeep. Scrying to the top. What is it? It's oh, Nebraska! Nebraska. So we can kill one of those Regal Caracals. Which is actually pretty nice. Or we can make more tokens, because <laughs> why not? Hey, those tokens would have a menace. That's true. That's true, Dun Dunzella. He f then he'll never have, have no basic lands in his deck and thin his deck mm -hmm. out a ton. It doesn't. Oh it only heart. gets basic lands. It doesn't get a t all your all your lands out of your deck. But I'm it still significantly will thin his deck. Yeah. Well, actually, this deck doesn't play that. I think he probably says. He probably doesn't have many more. My guess is he has two more planes and two more swamps in his deck. That's my guess. Maybe three more planes. Well, I mean, four cards thinned is still four cards thinned. It's true. And this is- he's not gonna get milled. It's true. He's also only scrying for infinity. So, it's not like he's oh, ever gonna- so we've decided not to blow up a caracal. We're instead going to make more tokens. <laughs> We're gonna make- So now we get one- pirates. Eight pirates. Gain 32- or 16 more life. <laughs> I just want to see what happens. Price is not wrong. We are gonna need more dice. The if, good news is my bag of dice is sitting there beside Justin. Yeah, so if you guys ever want to have literally the worst time of your life, play this deck on Moto. That sounds like just to hell. If you really want to use the uh, yield to triggers button. Oh. Just imagine what happens when we either find another anointed priest or the fourth anointing procession. So can I ask a question? You can definitely ask a That question. is almost completely irrelevant at this point. I'm guessing that's why it's just sitting there. What does Renegade Map even do at this point? Renegade Map, so do you know what it does? Not offhand. Oh, it's it's uh, one mana. You can tap it and sacrifice it. You get to search for a basic land and, and put, put it in, in your hand. hand. So yeah, it triggers Revolt and that's it. I think we can trigger Revolt. I think we can do yeah. that. So it's just, it, it's an artifact that is sitting there. What's Warsava? Uh, Was that just an event? Is that a place that I have never heard of? Yes. And Ronus is back! Oh, yay! When it doesn't matter. Yeah. Or what was it supposed to be Warsaw? Okay. That makes sense. But yeah, the... So we're gonna make another eight tokens here. Yeah, the tokens mirror sounds horrendous. Oh. <sighs> Huh. So are we attacking with these tokens? Is that what's happening? Right? Nope, he's making more. <laughs> oh, God, we got <laughs> the big the out. Big dice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, guys! There are eleven minutes left in the round. I don't think we're seeing a game two. <laughs> I cry. What is happening? Tokens, Bryce. You. This isn't like. This isn't <laughs> who can gain the most life. It is now. Adam, there is no way they're supposed to draw here. Bryce should have won like five turns ago. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I cry. I cry every time. Like, 
I don't know what his life total at. <laughs> that might be what his actual life total is. That's about as relevant. <laughs> Jake just walked back here to creep on us and just walked away shaking his head. I would too. <laughs> a lot of people give me flack about how often, like, I, I'll admit, I concede a little earlier than I should sometimes. Surprise is 25 treasure. Yeah, if I was Mike, I probably would have conceded at least 15 minutes ago. Yeah. At least to try and get in a game too. Yeah. His life total is 243. But we may as well leave it at 999 because that's going to change here in about three seconds. Yeah. Let's be real. So and we're going to make another eight treasures. If Bryce was a competent Turbo Fog player, not saying he's not, I have no clue how he is at playing Turbo Fog, we'd probably be done with the match already. Everyone complaining that Turbo Fog takes too long. I don't have a chip on my shoulder. It's fine, guys. Only the slightest detection of salt. No, not at all. Oh my god, are we finally activating it? Are we going for the swing? Okay. We're going for it! <laughs> We're attacking. Oh my god. Finally. Are we turning- are we just throwing it all sideways? If he throws it all sideways, then we see the set of the wreckage. <laughs> yep. Are we just but we're turning holding those? holding up the vampires. The vampires are gonna stay back. They're not getting frisky. Oh my god! No, oh, no, we're no holding they're back coming too. Sixteen. We're holding back sixteen <laughs> of the vampires. Uh. <laughs> so Bryce is just going for it here. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, Fatsuno, I'm not even sure anyone is stalling. I think Bryce is just <laughs> trying to play around Settle the Wreckage. And now he's just trying to pick up all the I guys. don't know. But I, I don't know what's going on at this point. <laughs> uh, he's, he's trying to decide whether he wants to search for lands at all. It looks like he is not. So now we're gonna get our- looks like we're gonna get our 16 servos here. Is... Tre I'm pretty sure Treasure Cove is actually not legendary. We'll get confirmation on that. But I'm pretty sure it's not. Well, I'll take a look. I'm pretty sure I've had two in play before. Yeah, I'm fairly certain that one is not legendary. It is not. But, thank you for trying to make sure that everything here is done correctly. There are... Some of them are legendary, some of them are not when it comes to the flip lands. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure the... The colored ones, I believe, know, are the, all legendary. Uh, is it, whatever, the colorless ones are not legendary, I'm pretty sure. Or at least most of them aren't. Correct. I think... Um, what's his faces? Uh... What? What? Sphinx. Azor's, uh, gateway. I think that one might be legendary. Maybe. Because that one's stupid. Yeah, the enchantment ones are all legendary. I do know that. I'm looking at Azor's gateway. Legendary I should know. Artifact, I've... legendary land. Okay, I've played more Azor's gateway in standard than probably most people. Yeah, it is actually legendary. I think that's the only one that's legendary. Mm-hmm. But that one also kind of should be legendary, let's be honest. It tapped for your life total. Yeah, it's true. So... Uh, I believe the the backside is called Sanctum of the Sun? It is. And it's dumb. And I'm still trying to play it in Commander and I just haven't gotten it to pop yet. Cause Why not? I don't think I've ever actually cast it. Just flip it and fireball someone. You have to find it to cast it. Enlighten Tutor. I think I actually cut it out of the one deck that I That's just put That's wrong. It in. It's win cons. That deck is bad. Fair. <laughs> I will fully admit when my decks are bad. When are we getting Rob back on? He might play around four. We'll see. Yeah. Yes. There we go, Fatsuno. Thalia's Lancer is right. the search for it. All right. 
Yeah, I know, Josh. I... Yeah, see? Bunzilla also is the correct Just draw it and you're starting seven. Out of 99 is a lot harder than it just... sounds, though. Sorry, just and like be I good. said, I think I cut it out of the one, because doesn't it only tap for... Uh, yeah, it only taps for one man of any color, and the one deck that I tried to put it in was a five-color deck. And also has, like, no life gain in it. We'll make a life gain deck and put it in. I mean, I do, but I also don't like it in my uh, Dramoka deck, because I care more about the cards that I I have, rather than making a billion mana, because I can make Fair. a billion mana anyway. Fair. Like, Guys, this has been a 50, almost a 50-minute game one. This is insanity. This is a 45-minute game one. I don't. Oh, I normally God. enjoy long, grindy games of Magic, but this, but this should not have sad. been long. This should not have been grindy. Sad is what it is. Oh my God. So what did we just punt? Was it me? No, I think the punt is this game. I think we punted the game. Okay. Um, this is standard, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest, but I so I don't think Bryce is intentionally trying to stall. I think he's I, trying I've, to play his deck. I've played yeah. uh with Bryce a bunch. He comes around here a lot. He's a, a good guy. He's not trying to do this. I if, he's probably wondering why Mike hasn't scooped at this point like the rest of us. That that is true. That is true. I think but I think there are, you can make an argument that what he's done is because you're stalling and maybe maybe he is i don't is that an evolving wilds yes this deck at bryce's deck actually does play evolving wilds it triggers the vault yeah it does um at this it's point i'm really late yeah i think i i'm at this point i'm willing to give bryce the benefit of the doubt um but yeah i think he's i think the pace of play should have been sped up and hey, bryce, i think bryce should have just been attacking a lot more Bryce, you gonna turn this creature sideways? Probably not. They'll trade. No. Like, why would we want our creatures to trade? Mm. Isn't there a card that says, like, if you have, like, 100 more creatures, win the game or something like that? 20. 20? Okay. We have that. That's, uh... In Legacy. Okay. And, of course, I know that, because I have a win conditions deck. Yeah, of course. That runs 19 creatures. This this has made me so sad. Same. Are we? We are popping the memorial to unity. Oh! Make a bunch of soldiers. Get sixteen one ones. Get some variation in our tokens now. I mean, we've run out of tokens. Well, let's look on the bright side. Bryce is a good guy. He's layering dice, not tokens. Uh, imagine Granted, if he had been layering tokens, I might have had to come up there and hurt him. Yeah. I'm beyond it. Like, I'm just imagining this board on Moto right now, and oh, I'm God. cringing. I think this would have broken Moto by now. No. Okay, I know it wouldn't quite have. I know it takes. The only thing quite that, like, more. really breaks Moto these days is either a bug. Um. Oh, we drew a chef at Dunes! Please, let's. Turn those tokens sideways! Let's kill him with some time left in the round. You've got two minutes, Oh, Bryce. we gotta make two more tutus. Sorry. Eight more tutus. With Menace. They can't attack this turn. Yeah. <laughs> he only has four points of lifelink on the board. He just announced combat. He can't activate a chef at Dunes anymore. Doesn't matter. It's still lethal. See? Adam agrees with me. Moto would have crashed. It's very possible. I don't know. Andre, that might be true. I don't- I haven't played almost- I haven't played almost any arena. I haven't played any arena at all. I just- the only uh, mobile magic I play is the uh, Match yeah. 3 app. I would like to point out- Which is fantastic, by the way. Yeah, I would like to point out. If they do not finish this combat step in the next 45 seconds, we will not have a game 2. You are not allowed to start a game in turns. 
So now we're Oh, and now they're talking about how lifelink works. So I don't think we're getting a game. No, we're two. not getting a game two. So Bryce is gonna give this one one oh. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, apparently he lives with oh this attack. Oh my god! <laughs> we have so many tokens we could have attacked with. <laughs> my heart hurts. Do we want to do like a New Year's uh, New Year's countdown? No. I don't have that much energy left in me. Here, have some caffeine. <laughs> and turns. Turns. <laughs> Jake is now here helping because I am certain this is the only game left. If Mike somehow draws like running settle the wreckages, we could still have a draw. Okay. So Mike's at four. Settle the wreckage. Right now I'm calling it uh, Blossoming Defense. Oh, okay. uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, and we're oh, okay. Thank God. We're done. Uh, Alright, so we're gonna take a very short break. Well, you can go ahead and take a short break. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the giveaway. Okay, yeah, you do you do that. Um so we'll be back for round four here just momentarily. So um while we have a second. Um, I want to go ahead and talk about our commander giveaway. Uh, so, those of you who have already entered tonight already know, but if you hit exclamation points, you will see that we now have a reward system. We collect mana. So, for every 10 minutes that you watch, if you are a non-sub, you will get 5 mana. If you are subbed, you will get 10 mana. If you are, if you sub, now that we have this rewards program in place, you will gain a 500 mana. If you follow, it'll be 50. Every 100 cheer will get you 100 mana. So now where you can use that mana is in our giveaways. So for the next three Tuesdays, we're going to be giving away Commander 2018 Commander decks. So this week, this next coming Tuesday, we are going to be giving away the um, Amina Toe Subjective Reality Esper deck. Um, and the way that you're going to enter is for every 25 mana you have, you can purchase one ticket by hitting exclamation enter up to 10 tickets for the week. This is running now and it will be running until 10 o'clock Eastern time, 10 o'clock PM Eastern time on Tuesday, August 28th, where we will be drawing our winner and be giving it away. Um, you will have two minutes after 10 o'clock to contact us after we announce the winner and, um, Give us your information. If you're in the Cincinnati area, we can work something out where you can come pick it up or we can ship it to you. So, uh, the next Tuesday, so September 4th, we're going to be giving away the Sahili deck. And the Tuesday after that, we are going to be giving away the, um, the Jun deck. So, we gave away the Esper deck last Tuesday. So, yesterday, last night, was our fir very first giveaway. So, we hope that a lot of you are going to enter. And I'm really excited because um, not only are we giving these away, I am going to soon be starting up a Commander series, at least on YouTube. Uh, the first videos I'm going to be doing, the first two, are going to be updates to the 2018 Commander decks. Uh, the first two are going to be the ones that I bought first. So you'll see the Bant and the Jun ones one week, and then the next week you'll see Sahili and Esper. And I'm going to be running them one-on-one -on -one with somebody else, I don't know who yet. Um, both pre-con and with my updated versions. It's not going to be anything super special. Like, this is not going to be budget upgrades or anything. This is just how I feel like the deck should be upgraded and kind of my version of the decks. So, I'm really excited. I hope you guys are excited to see more Commander content. I'm really excited to be giving this away as well. And I wish I could buy the Amina Toe deck because that's the only one I don't have yet. <laughs> so, again, if you want to enter... It's exclamation enter. You can also space however many tickets you want to buy up to 10. And yes, Justin, I know they have it in stock here, but that requires me to have money. And I also bought the Sealy deck yesterday. 